Okay, what's going on, everyone? I'm Dark Side Phil, and with me, as always, is John Rambo. Yes. And welcome to another edition of Smart Guys, our ongoing pro wrestling commentary show. I'm gonna close these windows and Dixie Carter picks I had up here. Whoa, 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 whoa! I said you could do that on your stuff, not my stuff, man. <laughs> that was last week. You're holding your milf cravings can stay, stay <laughs> on your your equipment. All right, uh, today is Friday, uh, November eighth, twenty thirteen. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Raw, what's going on with the plot lines, which is quite literally, if you've been watching Smart Guys recently, we hit it on the button, basically. We knew exactly what they were, where they were going with everything. Uh, Unfortunately. As far back as SummerSlam, even, I even said, our predictions I, you know, were right. Well, yeah, the Smart Guys after SummerSlam made some statements, you know, things that we thought would happen. Basically, we didn't think Brian would ever uh, really get what he deserved, and the storyline would be pointless and basically put over Triple H. And that's basically pretty much what we said, it's pretty much what would happen. A lot of people at the time disagreed with that. Um, I guess we were right, but sometimes you want to be wrong. You know? I, I agree there. Sometimes like, you want to be wrong. I would have liked to have been surprised. I would have yeah. liked if something did. They went a different direction, but and I can see why people think these things will happen because it's logical that Brian would beat them, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you look, okay, that makes sense. So you, you would like you would think that would be the case, but it's a whole other reality there. It's a whole other thing that that um, the mind of Vince. Yeah. The mind yeah. of Vince. Yeah. All right. Scary. So we're going to talk about Raw. We also got some developments in TNA this week. Uh, the continuation of their tournament towards a new champion uh, because AJ has supposedly left with the title. So a lot to talk about. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, I just want to put out, I'm going to uh, an event tomorrow night, the House of Hardcore. It's uh, Tommy Dreamer's promotion. It's the third show they ever have done. I went to the first one last year. It's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if anyone's going. If you, if you are there, say hello, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. But I get to see Terry Funk and Kevin Steen and uh, not Randy Orton or Big Show. <laughs> so I'm really excited. It's always fun to see great wrestling and uh, even better when you're there live. So. Right. And you'll probably have higher attendance than a TNA show oh, recently. I, so. I, yeah, I think there you so. go. I would, I would say yes. <laughs> so. All right. So let's jump right into WWE. Let's talk about what's been going on this week. So... If you remember last week, we had talked about how it looked like they were now pulling Daniel Bryan and CM Punk out of their respective storylines. We were wondering how that was going to develop, what was going to happen with Big Show, because remember, Randy Orton becoming the new champion, he's an opponent now, and it looked like they were setting up Big Show to be his opponent, but he was had been fired, there was a lawsuit pending. And you might say to yourself, gee, how are they going to wrap all this up for Survivor Series? And we made a prediction, and you're going to see... What is uh, Survivor Series, show? by the way? Um, I'm not 100%. I, I know it's. I believe it's always the weekend before Thanksgiving. So in this case, it would be the last. No, I think it's the the last Sunday. Yes, the last it's Sunday coming. of the month. Okay. Which is the, before Thanksgiving. It's like the 23rd. It's something. weird this year because Thanksgiving is actually the last week of the month, which it almost never is. <laughs> it's the last week this year, so it throws things off a little bit. But yeah, it's the, the weekend before uh, Thanksgiving. So... We're going to explain to you how they decided to do it, which is pretty much exactly what we said last week when we guessed, and we guessed correctly. All right, so, Raw opens guess. up. It's a prediction based on well, patterns and factual things. Yes, we know how they think at this point. Um, the show opens up with CM Punk in a singles match with Luke Harper, which, of course, as you know, will never be a singles match because the Wyatt family always seems to find ways to interfere, distract, etc. And so... Basically, they are. They're distracting Punk during the whole match. They're getting cheap shots in. Punk eventually does get the win uh, by, by, I believe he rolled up Luke Harper, uh, gets a quick pin, and so it looks like, wow, he won. But of course not. The Whites hit the ring. They start attacking Punk. So what happens? Daniel Bryan comes out with a steel chair and basically defends Punk, fends off the Wyatt family, and it looks like there may be a new so alliance this, brewing. This new feud that's going to last for who knows how long. But, yes, uh, and it probably... They're doing this because, again, they probably want teams for Survivor Series, as we talked about last week. They're trying to build up different people they can group together. And they're trying to put over the Wyatts, so they, they feel like these, these are the guys to do it. Right, you know? These right. are the utility guys, really. Look at right. Brian and Punk. That's what they've, they've always kind of used them as. Right. You know, Punk was the, the champion, and his utility job was to put over Rock, put over Cena, put over that thing, and that's what he did. And Brian put <clears> over <throat> the crappy Powers of B thing, and mm -hmm. so now they're doing that, so... Luke Harper's really good. Um, I don't think they've really shown like his full ability yet there, but that guy's uh, quite excellent for a big man. He can move quite well. Right. Versus his partner, 
Who? Yeah, Rowan is really bad. Very bad. Which, <laughs> yes. if, you, if you notice, every match that they have, Rowan barely is ever in the ring. When he is, he's only in for a minute or two. Yeah. And all these singles matches are all with Luke Harper, not with Rowan. So, mm-hmm. there you go. Uh, for the next match of the night was Ryback against the Great Khali. A complete Good throwaway God. match. They have nothing for Ryback to do. I get the feeling, again, this will start... They'll be on opposite teams, probably, at Survivor Series. Ryback wins with the meat hook clothesline because everyone knows he can't actually pick Kali up to do the shell shock. Uh, Alberto Del Rio has a singles match with Kofi Kingston. Uh, ends up going over. Uh, and I guess what they're trying to do is put a, at least a little bit more heat or credibility, or whatever you want to say it is, on him so that when he has the rematch with Cena, it's not complete fluff, although we all know it's going to be anyway. So they're basically pushing him out of the title picture come Survivor Series. Uh, but they are going to have that match. I think they, they're going to announce it today, I think. Yeah. They are going to, yeah, that, that's going to be the, you know. Oh, yeah. Everyone knew that anyway. Yeah, you know he was going to have the, the, the rematch, right? Yeah, it'll become official. Uh, Randy Orton has a match with Big E Langston. I have a lot to say about this match. Did you see this this match, John? The only thing I saw <laughs> is the, the ending segment. Okay. Which was disgusting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but what, what do you have to say about this? I'm Big curious to know. E, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to officially say this. Big E put in his first really good match. Because he did a lot. He did not gas out in this match. And yeah. this was long. This was over 10 minutes, I believe. Yeah. He did not gas out. He put in a good performance. And the whole match, he basically was dominating Orton. So in Orton's defense, he did put him over. And it makes Langston look really good. There were a couple times where he almost got the win. So it looked like you thought he was going to win. Yeah. But then the usual bullshit, which I totally disagree with with Orton, does he kick Langston in the balls behind the ref's back? Does he get a leverage pin? No, he just gets the RKO out of nowhere. And I hate that. That's always been Orton's thing. No matter what you do to him, oh, RKO out of nowhere, I win. It's stupid. I hate that. I hate that kind of sh- It's a cop-out. You don't like when he pelvic thrust the mat? <laughs> it's just so lame. It's down on all fours and humps the, the ring. It's just so lame. I hate that. At least, all right, he's a heel. If he's gonna, if he has to cheat to win because he, he surprised him or whatever, all right, have him cheat to win. No. Or just RKO, I win, I beat you clean. It's like, come on, man. There's a like, big rumor that hate uh, that. Big E's going to win the icy title. Maybe possibly on Raw. Hmm. Or uh, sometime after, shortly after that. Really? Yeah. Okay, we'll I don't see. know if that really matters. Well, Axel's not doing shit, so maybe they want to get drop it, have him drop it, get rid of him for a while. Have yeah. him come back later. Um, Alright, so just so everyone knows, it's very important, at least from what WWE is leading us to believe, Total Divas is returning. So everyone has to tune in on Sunday night. Total Divas on the E Network. I think it's like nine eight p.m. or something. I don't know what time it is. I don't watch that shit. But it's coming yeah, it's, back. It's on eight p.m. every Sunday. So instead of watching a pay per view where you spend a lot of money, <laughs> they don't give you a finish. You can just watch that instead. There you go. Watch Although Total that's Divas. That's probably just as bad as spending fifty bucks on something that's not good. So Tyson Kidd and Natalia, who on the finale of the Total Divas show earlier this year. Got married. They tied the knot, and that's real. They actually did get married. I was at the wedding. It was very nice. Yeah, you saw you shook hands with the there. anvil. That was awesome. <laughs> um, I was there to watch the anvil, make sure he didn't get out of control. They're wrestling Fandango and Summer Rae. So Summer Rae again in the ring, in ring action with Summer Rae. Uh, I don't know Summer Rae. I don't know. There's something about her. I don't. I don't like her. Whoa, come it's on like, now. It's and I don't mean her in ring ability. I don't know. Like her face or something. Her nose is weird. I don't what know. What the? Whoa, it's whoa, weird. whoa, whoa. I don't know. I can't, I can't look at it. Phil, don't be putting weird noses on She's, this program with, while I'm a co-host. Oh, uh, I didn't not, mean it like that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not appropriate. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's something about her. something about her. She looks weird. I, I'm sure people in the stream chat are going to disagree with me and say, fuck you. No. But I don't know. She just bugs me. She doesn't, She's actually know. in the chat. Uh-oh. She's very offended. Uh-oh. Not best for business. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Uh oh. The crying big show will be here momentarily to cry. Alright, so Tyson Kidd and Natalia. This by the way, this is Tyson Kidd's first televised match since he returned from his serious injury. I forget what it is that he injured. Uh was it something his foot something I don't know. He had injured something pretty bad. It may have uh, might have been like doesn't a say ACL here. or so. I don't yeah. Know. But he's returning from injury. He's back. They have a really good match. Tyson Kidd doing some pretty impressive stuff. We know he's impressive because we remember when he was back with the, when they redid the New Heart Foundation with uh Harry Smith. Right. And he was impressive he's, back uh, then. He was in Japan right now, tearing things up. Really? Oh, he's great, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they call him Davey Boy Smith Jr. It's kind of sad, wherever he goes, his name's Harry Smith. Yeah. They call him, like, David Hart or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's Davey Boy Smith Jr. in Japan, but <laughs> that guy's a great uh, great talent. Love yeah. Tyson kids. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tyson does really well. Good to see him back. We'll probably see a lot more of him since he's on Total Divas. 
And uh, that's all I really have to say about that. Unless um, you don't watch it. <laughs> so we've got a, a weird impromptu match. It's John Cena, Cody Rhodes, and Gold Dust against Damian Sandow and the Real Americans. John Cena. I don't think we need to tell you who wins this. Like, you know what I mean? If Cena's on one side, he's going to win. Well, if so. Damian Sandow and the Real Americans on the other side, it doesn't really matter who they're going against. Right. <laughs> Pretty much going to lose. I forget if Cesaro did the giant swing to anybody. He was going to do it, and then I think he got stopped. I think he was going to try to do it on Cena, and then he got stopped. He didn't get to do it. Yeah. And um, uh, it was Cesaro, uh, who, was, who was pinned? I believe it was um, Cesaro. Cesaro, yeah. because uh, Goldust surprised him with oh. the final cut. Oh. <clears throat> Goldust. Yes. Cesaro. Uh, Dolph Ziggler has a singles match with Curtis Axel and beats him. Beats him clean. All yeah, right. like Goldust do an old school Goldust promo. How we talk about like the direct oh, Hollywood show, it was a yeah. great performance. It be, but it was funny because you, Antonio Cesaro. They were all allusions to like he was filming like a porn movie or something. That, that, <laughs> was, that was the inside thing. Like the kids wouldn't get it, but the oh, adults yeah. were like, "Oh God!" Sometimes you'd have a camera. Yeah, yeah. I'm the director. This will be your greatest. Yeah, yeah. Performance. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very suggestive. Yes, that'd be funny if they did that. If they brought it back. I don't think they Just will. PG era. They can't do it. Uh, the Usos. Yeah. Defeat three man band at this point. I don't know if three man band is ever going to get a win. I don't think they ever have. Uh, on on Raw or SmackDown, they did get a win on. Mon- uh, Were main they event talking about Drew McIntyre's like repackaging thing? And did this happen like a couple like a couple weeks ago? That never They're happened. Talking about that. It never happened. All right. He never got repackaged. He's still in three man band. He's still the same guy. Maybe that is the repackage. I actually found it thing. funny in WWE 2K14. Drew McIntyre has a rating of 84. He's ranked higher than Heath Slater and uh, Jinder Mahal for some reason. Uh, I'd probably agree with that. Yeah. Some of the ratings are real crazy in that game. Though. Yeah, I don't know. Got Andre in a, an 89. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. <laughs> so the Usos go over three-man band. The Bella Twins and Eva Marie have a, a six-diva tag match against AJ Lee, Tamina, and Oksana, of all people. Oh, wow. Uh, They do go over, though. I think it was actually very stupid. It was like... uh. Eva Marie was very green. She can't really do much. Uh, and they tagged her in at the last minute just so she could get the pin. So it looked like she did something in the match. Wow. That's, and, uh, that's pretty much the whole show. And then the other the ending. Yeah. That was uh, insanely quick. So here we go. Big Show, oh, met, Big show met with the authority. It's just, uh, it's right. just it hurts your brain. I it mean, does hurt your brain. And it's it's just, just, here's, just here's what happened. And this is what we talked about last week. We were like, how is the Big Show who's fired... You know, who doesn't have a contract, who's suing the WWE, how is he possibly going to, in one, you know, in weeks or two weeks' time, come back and be able to be at Survivor Series in this match with Randy Orton? There well, really, there really was we, no made a, reason. we made a prediction. We said, well, he has this lawsuit. Maybe he'll hold that over the McMahon's heads to get his way. And that's exactly what happens. But the way that they did it was so the worst bad. possible way you could do it on TV. So they all go to the ring. They're all in the ring. Out in the ring. Oh, we're going to hash out our problems in the ring, whatever. Uh, apparently the board of directors has ordered that Triple H and Stephanie settle this lawsuit because they don't want the company to go under. They must and, settle. And that's the thing, like, they'll bring up certain things like that, you know. The whole board of directors thing is just when they can't explain a storyline, they just say that they right. told them to do something. But if you, like, put it all together, the other times that they've used them, it doesn't make sense at all mm-hmm. because they've removed uh, Triple H when he was not really doing things anywhere near to what he's doing now. Right. Uh, they, they brought in Lord Nice, they took him out. But uh, now they're back. They're I mean, back again. They're fine with what they're doing, but they want the Big Show rehired. And, yes. And they don't want this lawsuit. Well, they didn't say that. Okay. They didn't say they wanted the Big Show rehired. They just said they want to settle. They want to, they want to yeah. settle the lawsuit. Yeah. So they asked Big Show, what do you I, want? They're implying there's something about the McMahons that are mm-hmm. uh, they don't want to reveal or something, right? There's some kind of secret thing. I don't know. Even <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. very, very yeah. weird. Yeah. So they asked the Big Show, what do you want? Big Show says, I want my job back. So they say, okay, you can have it. Of course, Triple H is like, no, you can't, blah, blah, blah. And Stephanie's like, no, we have to settle. Shut up. And then he's like, then I want a title match against Randy Orton in a Survivor Series. They give him that. Well, they're talking about, like, he has this lawsuit where he can remove them. He'll be... Right. He'll take control of the company somehow. Basically or, saying that he'll he'll own the company. He'll own the company, basically. Like, right. The amount he'll get. Which you can't do with a lawsuit. So instead of whatever. going, you know what, I'll just do that. And I'll put myself in the title match. You know, that that might be a good idea. No, we'll, we'll, we'll agree to these weird... Right. Stipulations. And then he wants a title match, but he never says, like, I want a title match where no one can attack me. Right. Considering, like, that'd be a good idea, considering, like, the last several pay-per-views were all, you know... Massive people... interference yeah, right. and cheating so and all kinds of stuff. I want, right. a, I want a title match where no one can can interfere. He just doesn't say that. He just goes, I want a title match. 
And the whole thing is just very slow. Not very smart. Plotting. He leaves the ring at one point. Right. Because Triple H says no, and then he's like, are you sure? And um, does, really, does anyone really care, like, if he gets the title shot or not? At one point, he does the yes chant. Yeah, which just pisses me off because now he stole it from Daniel Bryan. It's like, that was that's Daniel Bryan's thing. That's been his gimmick. You know, he took it through how many different storylines over the past several years. Now you're just going to give it to Big Shell. Well, they're having, they'll have him do it to get the, the reaction from the fans. If you have to use another guy's thing to get a reaction from the fans, maybe that other guy should be in this position. Right. Right? Right. Just just saying. <clears throat> um, and then what, eventually... Oh, yeah, the shield comes out. Yes. And uh, apparently this was like a like a botch, like a production botch, because they came out too early, or they, they made them come out too early or something. And then if you watch a Triple H's stuff, you're like, huh? They're like, what is, why are they coming? And then it goes to commercial. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like a production issue. Huh. And then they come back and um, they agree to the Big Show's things. All right. And then they just beat the total piss out of them. Yeah, that's just so stupid. <laughs> so let's think about this logically, which I guess you're not supposed to do when you watch WWE. No, no it's, 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 think, it's made for like eight-year-olds. So Big Show has a lawsuit. He's going to bankrupt the company. He says, I'll drop the lawsuit if you give me this match at SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you give me my job back. He hasn't signed a new contract. They didn't, he didn't like rescind the thing. He or... didn't sign a contract for the match. What's to stop them from just not having the match? Anyway? He's basically suing them because they were like abusive to him, right? right? That's pretty much the reason. And he didn't contact his lawyer to drop the lawsuit. Now, oh, guess what? This we... is a verbal agreement. That's it. Okay, you're back. Big Show. Yeah, he goes. Okay, you're back in the company now. So it's like what? Everyone just fuck him, and they just completely. Or in, yeah, Randy Orton and the Shield all come out and rip his shit. Rip his clothes off. It's disgusting. They rip his shirt. He has no shirt. He looks nasty. He's an old man, you know. He's like, oh, I don't want to see that. He's a giant old man. And they power bomb him through the uh, the announce table. uh, Kane comes out. Well, actually, Big Show. Oh God, that's right. First of all, actually, Big Show was killing them all, which is stupid. And right there, right, he's defeating the entire Shield and Randy Orton by himself because he's so big. (laughs) And the and he's just slow plotting punches. And he's waiting. They wait for his the opportunity to get punched by him. And then Kane comes out, he's distracted in by him. In a business him. suit with hair, he grew hair. Yeah, Isaac Yankum Kane looks more like that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess it's Kane's new thing, he's going to be part of the, the group he's there. He's the director of operations, Kane, yes. Hopefully he's getting paid well, he's probably got like some stock and for he maybe got his own show in the network, a business show or oh, something. Oh boy. And, uh, Kane, the director of I mean, operations show. Of show. I mean, his, <clears throat> and no one comes out to help Big Show, that's another thing. Right, nobody. Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan who's involved with these guys. Any of these people who've been beaten up by the Shield or the McMahon. Daniel Bryan none who's, of them show who's up. obviously there because he was on the show. He doesn't come out to help. <laughs> no one comes out, and then that's it. I mean, it's just I don't know. It's just you can't. It's hard, really hard to enjoy when there's that many holes in it, and it just doesn't make sense. It's just silly. Yeah. I, you can suspend your disbelief to a point, but you can't. You know. Right, and then, and then it's also like, okay, it's if it's leading to a match you want to see. You'll kind of accept some of the problems, right? right. But who wants to see that match? Well, no, yeah, Big exactly. Show, I don't want to. Yeah. Fifty something dollars. Who the hell wants to watch that match? You're right. So it's just <clears> a bad storyline leading to a bad match. And as usual with WWE, and what's completely retconning things, completely yeah. forgetting things. But some things still come back. But other things you're supposed to forget. You right. remember other things. And then every once in a while they'll make a snide reference to something like you. Oh well, the smart people will remember this, but you know it doesn't really affect. Like here's what I don't get. All right, Kane. This monster is yours to, to control. Kane had a plot line. How many things has he been A decade through? ago. Yeah. With Triple H. Katie Vick. That's all I have to say. Like, of all the things ever, the infamous things that WWE did, it was the most infamous. It's always, it's, they've never lived it down. They've never been able to justify it. It's probably one of the worst plot lines ever in WWE. This is close to that. There is no way that Kane would ever, ever ally himself with Triple H. But well, now it's like... Well, Orton's with him too. They, 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 it's just that's like I always say. I always Ugh. say this is really like a nasty thing to say. I always keep saying, but like it just doesn't matter. Why are you supposed to care when they tell you like it doesn't matter? Like a few months later, like yeah. you're not supposed to remember this. It's, it's good for you that you liked our Daniel Bryan storyline and you bought the pay per views. Guess what? Fuck you. He's gone and doesn't matter. And there's no resolution. So too bad it and never like, happened. The, or- the Orton Big Show match. What do you think is going to happen in that match? This it's gonna what, be a terrible Kane's match. Come in, slow match. He'll be distracted. Right. He'll be distracted by this Kane the shield and fucking everything will you know. Yeah. And he'll lose. RKO out of nowhere. He'll lose. It's sad because they like the big show thing. Like it, um, it goes from being a pro wrestling thing to being something that's just crap. Because like the pro wrestling thing. Okay, the big show. They're making him do this stuff. Right. He doesn't want to do it. He hates them, but he's work. He has to work for them. I'll accept that. 
Like, you, you keep doing that, and you build to a moment where he just has enough, he can't take it anymore, and he punches the shit out of Triple H, and everyone goes nuts. Because he finally broke the chains, he finally, you know, he's he's free now, and he's, right. and he's crazy. They, they, they just did it in such a bad way. <laughs> That's not what they did, you know, it's like, now he's got a lawsuit, who cares about it? No one cares about uh. that. He has a lawsuit to take a troll... <laughs> And then now he's, he's fired. He's banned for life. He's, he's banned back. for life. We're showing videos of him. Yeah, he's, he comes out. He's he hacks, here anyway. He hacked the Titan Tron. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. What quite, do, what quite do I poor. know? Quite poor. What do I know? <sighs> All right, let's talk about TNA, and then we'll talk about our plans for the next few weeks because unfortunately we are changing things up a little bit due to Whoa. some upcoming events. All right. Whoa. All right. So TNA this week, a lot of plot lines. Uh, continuing on, first of all, the main event of the night is going to be Jeff Hardy against Chris Sabin. This is the next round of the uh, tag team, not tag team tournament, the next round of the World Heavyweight Championship tournament, uh, since it is a vacant title because AJ left. And it's so funny because AJ left with the title. And like yeah. you said, he's doing a world tour. The show oh, that? here comes a promo. Oh, look, it's AJ. He's in Mexico. Yeah. He's wrestling right. and he won. He defended the title. So, why are you showing this on the show? It's the same as WWE. Someone's not with your company. Yeah. But you're gonna show them. It's like obviously this is stupid. This is just you know. See, I talked about that last week. How are they gonna do that? I wonder like what, what would be the best way to do this. You know, maybe on like <sighs> the on the net or something. You at least like, I don't know. It's weird. They were they ran the promo and then it said this was this was shown by the friends of AJ. That's what it said. Oh, uh, okay. So someone's Pro- like pr- provided to you by the friends of AJ. And then she's like freaks out. Dixie's pissed. Yeah. But then they're gonna keep doing this every week. Now. They cut they cut to the back and piss. How is he doing? to me i hate him i hate him she's like flipping out yeah, he's going to japan this week oh cool and he's going all over the place but i'd like to see the match like the whole match you know right yeah they showed not, they showed one move yeah it's him like jumping the, from the top of that's it it's that's the thing like, what's the point if it's just gonna be like that right like you want people to be like actually get into the storyline right oh wow look what he's doing this is real is he really a, like the fact that they show it makes you okay it's obviously part of the show right right i don't know all right uh so let's uh, rather than going through the entire show uh, what I'll do is I'll give you some of the general plot lines. First of all, Main Event Mafia has disbanded uh, because all of the members of the Main Event Mafia are involved in this World Heavyweight Title Tournament, and therefore they said that they don't they're not needed anymore. The Aces and Eights has basically been shrunken. It's not a big entity anymore. We don't really need to be together anymore. We really needed them before. We got the title off Bully Ray, yeah. so we're disbanding. So they disband. Uh, several times during the night, Angle and Rude get into giant brawls. Uh, so at some points they've hold up the whole show because they just keep running out into the ringside and fighting each other. It's mm-hmm. really silly. Um, and, uh, and then of course Austin Aries says to Angle, you got to focus on me, not on him. I'm your opponent next week. Uh, and then they, they actually spin the wheel of Dixie and they get submissions. It's a submission we'll match next week. I have nightmares about <clears throat> that wheel of Dixie. Uh, the big thing with Aces and Eights this week is that Kennedy is back, as you know. Well, I guess it's not Kennedy. Anderson, Anderson sorry. Anderson. Anderson's back, and he wants a match with Bully Ray so badly. Uh, and then all of a sudden, there's dissension in, in Aces and Eights. It show like, like uh, Nux and Garrett are like, we don't want to be, we don't know if we want to be in the club anymore because it's all about you and it's all screwed up. Everyone left. So they call a vote. They said, we're going to have a vote later tonight, uh, and we're going to involve Taz as well because Taz is still part of the club. And we're going to vote on if, if this club should disband or if we're going to keep going and what it's going to be our future plans. So later on in the night, they do. They have this vote. And uh, everyone votes to leave. Everyone. They all vote to leave. They just say, bully, you made it all about you. Screw you. This is bullshit. We don't want to be in the club anymore. And they're all leaving. And then Anderson gets in the ring. And he's like, ha-ha, you know, I, you know they're disbanded to gotcha. And then Bully says, all right, I'll give you a match. You know, look what you did. You disbanded my club. How dare you? I'll give you a match. And then he goes, but by the way, before you leave, I know that you're a big fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin. What the hell? I don't know what that means, right? He goes, so maybe you should remember one of the things that he always used to say. And he botches it. He doesn't say, don't trust anyone. Trust no he person. Says, don't trust anybody. I was like, that's not what it was. It was don't trust anyone. So he says, don't trust anybody. All of a sudden, the Aces and Eights hit the ring and beat the shit out of them. So it was a whole swerve. The whole thing was fake. There was no real vote. The Aces and Aces is not disbanded. They're still together. It was uh, a swerve. The whole stupid they're thing. They're doing No Surrender, I think, on TV. Yes. I think it was a couple weeks or something. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, no, it's Turning Point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning that's Point. It. That's it, yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, in a few... It's November 21st, I think they said. Yeah. So two weeks' time, uh, it's going to be. Yeah, I saw what the <clears throat> part is. Uh, there's going to be a match that has to do with this. Okay. So. Um... 
What else happened? Let's see. Let me go to the next. How was the show here. overall? Because I didn't hear anything about the show. I didn't see it. Pac-Man Jones, John. Oh, that's what you have to say. <laughs> that was the show, Pac-Man Jones. Great, his great return oh, to God. TNA ring, where Pac-Man Jones and someone else from this team, I don't know who it was. Uh, they said his name. I don't know who it was. Oh, he was just in the audience? They're in the front row, and Kazarian and Daniels, for some reason, get in their face for no reason, right? Oh, no. And they push them. So they jump the barrier, and they jump. They go in the ring, and they both, uh, both Kazakh and uh, Daniels, after they're going to suplex them, they both block the suplex and body slam them. Oh, so they, like, they, they actually put hands on yes. the Pac-Man? they body slammed the two of them. Former tag team champion? Well, no, no, no. They slammed them. Oh. Pac-Man and the other guy slammed them oh, okay. in the ring. Okay. And then it was like a two-minute celebration by Pac-Man like he had done something great. He's like, yeah, he's like all in the ring dancing. Someone in the, in the audience had a big Pac-Man sign, so apparently everyone knew he was going to be there. And they're all yeah, they did like a little thing online. Um, it was basically, you know, they had Tito come out, and they always do these like big reveals. She, she had Dixie doing a YouTube video, and she said, like, a former champion will be coming out on uh, Impact this week. And huh. um, then they had Borash and um, Dave Lagana, hmm. and they were like, who is it? Is it this guy? Is it that guy? She's like, no, you, you, know, you can't wait to see who it is. And there was a video after that where she says, like, it's Pac-Man, and they, uh. and they, they both act like they're just like, oh, fuck. Like, they were disgusted. <laughs> it was kind of like mocking her own, their own thing. Right, they, right, they've right. so many times. Right. So it was kind of funny, but. Okay. I don't know. Uh, there was a, another, yet again, another number one contenders match for the Knockouts Championship. This time it was a triple threat between Brooke, Velvet Sky, and ODB. And it goes to a no contest because, yet again, Gail Kim and Lady Tapa come out and interfere in the match. All right. So, basically, Gail Kim interferes, does a finisher to one of them. Lady Tapa comes out. She destroys ODB. So, the whole ring, they're all not laid out. And Gail Kim grabs the mic and says, I'm the dominant female... No one can beat me. These three are a joke. So I'm having an open call to any female out there who wrestles. Come challenge me for the title. So I guess they're going to do like, they're going to have new women coming in from outside of TNA. Yeah, they're just coming for a shot To or wrestle something. Gail Kim, yeah. Because just they don't have a roster. Right, they don't have anybody to go. And I guess they yeah, realize these three are kind of dead, you know. That's a good idea. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else was on. I don't think there was much else besides the main event. See, I kind of like the uh, the gut check stuff. Because you got to see, like, some new guys once in a while. Right, right, right. You know, um, I don't like how they did it, where they didn't actually hire anyone. They fired everyone. Yeah, <laughs> they, they hired everyone and fired them all. But, uh, yeah, I think it's something they could do is like, be a little more open with the roster. Have a guy, you know, have some guy from the Indies do a, a, a shot, you know, do a, a match. Or, you know, I don't know. It kind of breaks things up a little bit. So... There's a promo backstage with Ethan Carter the third. He's with Dixie for the first time. They interact. He's great. So they're talking to each other. And Dixie, of course, kissing his ass. Oh, the world needs more Carters. She says, so for the very first time, I'm letting you pick your opponent tonight between two great challengers. Two guys you beat. These are world-class people you need to choose. So he's like, all right, I'll choose from one of them. Comes out, it's the same guy who wrestled two weeks ago. That Dewey Barnes guy who looks like freaking uh, Bob Backlund. Yeah. It's the same guy squashes him again. It's the same. It's basically the same match. It's terrible, and so it's like he wins again. Big deal. They're probably like you said. This is the plot line. They're gonna keep doing this. He'll keep wrestling the same two or three people uh, until finally he uh, eventually has to He's wrestle someone. To a match of some sort. Um, Eric Young and Joseph Park have a tag match with Bad Influence, and I'm trying to remember. Bad Influence wins. Hmm. Something. I think they cheated. Yeah, yeah. He threw the apple teeny into Joseph Park's eyes, and oh, they rolled come him on, up. Man. The the scalding, gonna... the scalding acid apple teeny. How many times are we gonna do this? Blinds him. Yes. Uh, what else? That's it. The main event. And I, I have to admit, I I don't know who won this. I'm gonna have to read it for the first time here because the main event was great. So you had Jeff Hardy, Chris Sabin, Full Metal Mayhem. Using chairs, using ladders, using tables. They used everything to tr uh, trash can. No, isn't Saban the X Division champion? Yes. But he didn't defend the title here? No. no this is, oh, the, I love this is the tournament. I love when the, oh, it's the tournament match. This is the main, the, the, the okay, okay. heavyweight tournament match, right? All right. And uh, it's a crazy ass match. Like I said, everyone hitting their spots. We knew it would be good when you got Hardy in it, and Saban, in his own regard, is also very good. Um, and this was like the biggest blue balls for me ever. Because I watched the whole match, I'm loving it. I'm like, this is good. This is pay per view level. I'm, I'm really liking this. Chris Saban puts Hardy out on a table in the middle of the ring. He goes up, goes up to the corner turnbuckle, stands on top, he poses. He jumps, 
And then my DVR froze because the show cut off because it went overrun, and I don't know what happened after that. So let's actually see Yeah, here. it's pretty funny what the dude wrote. Uh, basically, Hardy won. Um, and he, he basically says a good TV main event, rewarding the viewers who sat through basically bad matches and a lot of talking <laughs> before this. Oh, and by the way, by the way, I do have to tell you, John. I want to hear it. Jeff Hardy's new album. Is it out? Ten new tracks is live on TNA.com. You can get it right now. And his new theme song is a song from his album. Is it called Ten New Tracks? Or is this no, the it's called, it? uh, it's like Work Reality or some shit like that. Something like that. Whoa. And the new song is terrible, by the way. It's awful. Is it, is it worse than the other songs he had? It was worse. It's worse than no, the other not. one by far. What about the one where he just mumbles when he was a heel? Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than that? It's worse than that. No, it's not. It's fast-paced. It's, it's terrible. But he did have another one, and I have to say, they played one during the promo that I actually thought was actually quite good. So it might be a mix of, like, one or two good songs and, like, eight shitty things because he wanted to pretend like he had an album. I don't know. Put an album together. But, uh, I don't know if anyone wants to give it a listen. I think his new theme song's terrible. Uh, I did like one of the other ones, though. So, we'll have to see. We'll have to see uh, what happens there. So, what happened? How did the match end? Because I fucking... I don't know. I Here it is. Know. Hardy puts Saban on a table, tried a big splash, but Saban... Oh, it was the other way around. Hardy was going oh, for a splash okay. on Saban. Hardy got his All right. knees up. Yes. Back in the ring, Saban placed Hardy on another table. Saban wanted a top rope splash, but Hardy got his knees up, and both men crashed through the table. No, Saban men. jumped. Saban oh, okay, jumped. okay, there you go. Saban jumped, Hardy put his knees up, they both, they went, both through. went through the table. And then, so uh, they reset. Hardy kicks Saban, nails a twist of fate. But well, Hardy didn't make the cover. Instead, he placed a ladder in the corner, removed his T-shirt, oh, <laughs> and got the Tom Turbuckle to fly over the ladder with a super swanton bomb. Whoa. Yeah, Damn, I missed this ending. This is good. probably good, yeah. That was good. Fuck, man. It's All probably right. good. Post-match, Velvet Sky and trainers come to the ring to check on Saban. Sky sold concern for Saban, who remained flat on his back. Two trainers checked on him. And that was it. All right. So Jeff Hardy advances. I don't think it's any surprise. I mean, Chris Saban's the X Division champion. He's not going to go very far in this this uh, series. And they only really yeah. put him in there to have variety in the people that were in it. There was all former world champions. Is there like a bracket to this? We don't know. There is a bracket. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Angle and Aries, and then I believe it's Magnus and Joe's in there somewhere. It's not Joe. Joe not yet. Not Joe yet. is going against. Um, what the fuck? Why can't I remember? I'm like I'm like, was it like a Garrett, brain. Is it Garrett Bischoff? Hold on a minute. Is it? It's probably on TNA.com. Is not Garrett Bischoff. What are you talking about? Is it Dixie? Let me get. Let me find it. Is it Knox? Impact Wrestling, right? That's their website now. I think no. It's TNA Wrestling. Is it? Yeah. No, it's Impact Wrestling. It's probably, like, probably either one. Probably both go to it. Let me see if I can find the bracket. I'm sure it's on here. I doubt it. Why wouldn't it be on here? There they are, John. Oh my God. Pac-Man Jones and the other guy who I don't know who the hell he is. Pac-Man Jones, former tag champion. It's the Pac-Man Jones. Yeah, with, uh, our truth. All right, Three I'm, champions. I'm going to click on this. There's a shark boy. Where the hell's the is rest of the fucking... Shane O'Mac. No. I tell you something. People are probably telling us in the chat, by the way. They don't know. They, they don't watch. They don't oh, watch I think this. it might be... Maybe it's rude. Okay. Oh, James Storm. Okay. James Storm is going to wrestle rude. Angle's going to wrestle Aries. And Magnus is going to wrestle Joe. That's it. There you go. That's it. Okay. I remembered now. I remembered the bracket. Yeah. So, it's interesting. I think... So, I think Hardy is going to face the winner of Storm and Rude. It's going to be Hardy versus Magnus. You think so? Hardy versus Magnus? And then Magnus wins. That's hmm. my prediction. Because they were... What they, what they were teasing is that it was going to be Angle and Rude, but I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be Angle and Rude. No, because Angle's got his own storyline where he's, you know, got the... Uh, whatever it's supposed to be. He's having seizures Yeah, and something. funny about that? Never mentioned it. <laughs> they pretended like it didn't happen. Basically, Angle was like, I got knocked out again last week, but I'm ready to fight! And he tries to fight Rude again. It was like, they never mentioned why was he so weird... You know, what was that? Was it like a spinal injury? Was it something in his head? They never mentioned it at all. It was huh. like, oh, he got knocked out again. That sounds like TNA. Yeah, so it was very weird. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the only thing I want to bring up, uh, the SummerSlam buy rate came out. Oh, no. And it was like 20% lower than the year before. So a lot of people were saying that they blamed Daniel Bryan. That's why he's being basically taken out of that title picture. And um, there's also strong belief that they're going back to big guys, larger-than-life guys. That's why you see Great Khali a lot now. 
Uh, Big Show's in the main event. So, I don't know, it's just really um, ass backwards thinking. Well, first of all, WrestleMania was down from the year before, and that was Cena and The Rock. Right. So, um, is it possible Cena is the problem? Because it's always him in the main event. Is it possible that this the commercial for SummerSlam, which people who don't watch wrestling saw this, and you don't see, like... <laughs> You know, anything has to do with guys fighting these people in, like, the beach, I think. It was, right. like, people in the ocean or and something. And then you see the poster, too? Remember I told you about the poster? Yeah, yeah. It's a bunch of them on a roller coaster. Right. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? And then if you remember, it's not like Daniel Bryan ever really got a chance. Because if you remember, we even talked about it the week before SummerSlam, where everyone was real excited that he's getting a title shot. Right. But it was all about, will Randy cash in? Will this happen? Will that right. happen? And the commands were involved. Uh, Vince. And, yep, yep. And you know, Triple H was the ref. So pretty much everyone knew there's going to be some kind of cluster mess to this match. And I even said I, I won't. I, won't, I don't want to watch it because I know something crazy stupid is going to happen, and it's possible that other people felt the same way. So. Right. But they just go, "Oh, Daniel Bryan in the main event." Right. No. Right. 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 They don't like these these small guys. I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. Obviously, they think they know better than everyone else. And what's funny, like I don't know. promoting him for the match, Vince was calling him small and everything. Yeah. He would say, "You're small. You're not very good." Right. Oh, You're by a B the way, plus, remember. By the way, by B this plus. show. To watch this guy that we just called small and then isn't really good. I don't know. Very stupid. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that's it for Smart Guys. However, we've got important news regarding Smart Guys for the next several weeks. Uh, so, basically, here's the deal. The next couple of weeks are very unique. Uh, for the first time in a while, we've got a new console generation that is coming out. And what this means is that both a week from today and a week, two weeks from today, Wow. We've got the release of two major consoles, the PlayStation 4 next week and the Xbox One afterwards. Now, normally what we do uh, when John comes over to do stuff, we film smart guys like this first, and then we'll do our co-op commentary, gameplay, whatever, afterwards. However, with these console launches, we know we're going to have a ton of stuff to do uh, in regards to how the games and stuff that are coming out, and it's going to be very time-consuming, very filling, and let's face it, that's all anyone's going to want to see. They're going to want to see, are they playing with the new consoles? Are they doing stuff with the new consoles? So... Smart Guys is going on a hiatus starting now. Uh, there will no be, not be a new Smart Guys next week nor the week after. And in fact, the week after that, if I remember correctly, I think it will be up to us what we want to do. I think that, let me just double check that. That would be the weekend after Thanksgiving, okay? Uh, I will be free, so it's up to you basically. What is it, the day after? What is it? It would be the weekend after Thanksgiving, that Saturday or Sunday or whatever. Yeah, I should uh, I'll, I'm free, so if you want to yeah, come yeah. back then, maybe what we'll do at the end of the month. We'll have a, a recap, smart guys. That'll that by then we'll have Survivor Series results. We'll know a lot more about what's going on with the TNA title picture. We'll have a hell of a lot of stuff going on yeah. by then. Uh, so there is going to be a two-week hiatus here with no smart guys. But we'll be returning at the end of the month with smart guys after the new consoles have already been released and we've we've handled those launches. Uh, We'll be back. We'll be refreshed. At this point, we're doing uh, the Sims. Uh, that's the other as thing. well. That's the thing. The that's Sims it. would have been the week of. Xbox One. And we could so, do it the, week, the, the next one, though. We could if we wanted. We could do it a week late. That's up to us. But then again, if we do The Sims then, now you're foregoing Super Mario Brothers for 3U that comes out that week before. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now we're delaying other new stuff that people might want to see for the sake of now simming a pay-per-view that's a week old. So It's probably not going to be good. It's probably Exactly. Exactly. I had to say it, but exactly. So I don't know. And plus, we've done a lot. We just did a whole week of WWE last week. So maybe it's a good idea to give it a skip. I don't know. We'll talk it out, and we'll figure it out for ourselves. But I just want to let everyone know that, yes, Smart Guys is going on a two-week hiatus. We'll come back the very last weekend of November. And Sims will talk about, we'll try to figure it out. But there's so much new stuff coming out now on the new consoles. And then you got the new Mario uh, for Wii U coming out. And I'm almost of the impression I think there's something else, too, that I'm not remembering right now that we might want to do co-op as well. We're going to be busy. Uh... In regards to that, and let's face it, I've played the hell out of WWE 2K14 already this past two you weeks. You beat the streak. Once you do that, I beat the streak with. There's nothing left to do. When you beat the streak with David Otunga, I think uh, you pretty much put a fork in that one. And I don't know how that happened. It was like a squash match. It really was. Really? It was yeah, I gotta check that out. You guys, it's it's the oddest fucking thing. You'll be like, what? Because does the Undertaker does not do the stuff that he's supposed to do. Huh? It's just very odd. Like Undertaker was like, I don't know, I don't know, very weird. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so that's our plan for the next several weeks. I hope that everyone now will spread the word about that. Please let everyone know. Hiatus of two weeks for Smart Guys coming back at the end of the month. 
Probably aren't going to be doing Sims of Survivor Series because we got so much other co-op stuff to do that'll be hot and new that people want to see. But it doesn't mean that we're not going to do it. For example, in December you'll have TLC. They'll probably do. That'll be fun too because you have to do those you know TLC things. Right. And by then I'm sure we'll have all kinds of created characters. We'll be downloading some zany matches and stuff. We did some stuff last year. This year, this year we'll be able to do more because it'll actually fucking work. That works like perfect. Yeah. It's, I, yeah. I, I actually got a bunch of created wrestlers. Yeah. It's like amazing. Uh, that are working. So yeah, it's really re working really well. So any of you who are interested, WWE 2K14, in my opinion, at least, outstanding, especially compared to yeah. last year. Really well done. Many vast improvements. The game's really good. You should definitely you know, check it out. You know, 100 created characters. That's all. Oh my God, that's so many. Think about 100 that. created characters. How many guys are in the game normally? I think over 100. Right, so that's, that's quite the roster. It's pretty nuts. So, so very good. Uh, that's going to be it for this edition of Smart Guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you in three weeks, the end of the month. Uh, so I guess we should say happy Thanksgiving in advance to everyone since we won't see you. Oh, you'll probably uh, be talking to people before that. Oh, right? we will, you know, but for people who only watch Smart Guys, you know. Only Smart Guys? Come on, There probably are people There's who There's all only kinds watch. of other things to watch. What do you mean? There are people who are just wrestling right. fans who don't even watch our game, our game, my gameplay. They don't watch your not right. your, your show or, or Schnozman or anything it's like that. Right. They just watch smart guys. You don't believe it? You don't think I believe wrong? it? I just don't. I just don't agree with it, the practice. You don't agree with it? They should watch everything. They have to. It's mandatory should... that they must watch every show. I think so. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we're looking for proof. There's only a piece of the puzzle. We'll be friends. looking for proof that you are watching all of our content at all times. If you don't, you're banned. Whoa, smart whoa, whoa, guys. whoa, 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 easy. From now on, easy there. You'll easy be banned. You'll never be able to return, much like the big show. You'll never be able to Even return really to watch can. our content. Which means you really can. You which can just walk right in. Is, yes. With, <laughs> with, with music, you can walk right into the shot. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, so thank you, everyone, for watching Smart Guys. I'm Dark Side Phil for John Rambo, signing off. Peace out. Have a good month. Happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you at the New end of consoles. November. New consoles. New consoles. New consoles. Definitely check out our coverage. That's going to be some good stuff. All right. Thank you very much, and see you later.